I'm going to have a little bit of a rant before oh, we get into games. Go. All right, yeah. I have before me oh God. a piece of paper. <laughs> it's a manifesto. A manifesto. Well, now, actually, this just lists from three of the sources of games that I subscribe to each month. Mm. So, Games for Gold, PlayStation Plus, and the Humble Monthly. Yeah. This lists all the games that I got in May. Okay, May. This is just one month. One month. Wow. Okay. Janna Sisters Twisted Dreams. Uh, Lara Croft and the Temple of Osisis, uh, Force Unleashed 2, a Star Wars game, and Lego Star Wars Complete Saga. That was on Xbox uh, Gold, Games with Gold. So they come free via your Xbox okay, Gold. Okay, so have a look at those. So the Yana Sisters, that's Twisted a sort of Mario thing, isn't no, it? No, I don't care. Um, uh, the Lara Croft thing is that um, uh, isometric y, puzzly, more version okay, of the game. It's not a proper no. full on. Okay, too Force more. Unleashed is just um, um, I think, yeah. Jedi going nuts. Yeah, and Star Wars Lego, if I have to explain what that is, then. Star Wars Lego, what? The, oh, the complete saga. My yeah. God, how many of those is that? Uh, that? That's just the six chapters. That's the first two games basically mashed together. Right, okay. The PlayStation Plus was Tales from the Borderlands. Okay. That's... Which is the Telltale game. Yeah, how big are those? Uh, well, they, there's about. Eight hours there, probably. Mm. Abzu, which is a underwater exploration game, which I was going to buy. Okay. I never got around to buying it for reasons I'll explain afterwards. Yeah. Uh, Laser Disc Defenders, don't know. And Rider, again, I don't really care. Right. Then there is Humble Bundle, which is actually the best of the value of the month. For it. it's so a the humble, this is the Humble Monthly. No, thing. Humble Monthly, yeah, this yeah. is tenner a month. Because they do a subscription, effectively. You get one headline game. Yeah. In this case, it was Dirt Rally, okay. which is a fantastic game, well worth it. Mm. And you also got This is the Police, which is an interesting little uh, game. Undertale, which is fantastic. Inside, which is fantastic. Metro Plus, which is okay, I think. Uh, Gone Out, which I've not played. Uh, underwear, which I haven't played. The Turing Test, which is interesting. Uh, Super Rude Bear, Resurrection, which I don't care. And Asby, which I haven't played. Yeah. But those are my monthly games. And add to that the 117 games I just got for <laughs> doing the free trial for uh, Microsoft's new Xbox Game Sub system. But that doesn't happen every month, does it? No, the, the, there's 117 games available at the moment, but they're going to shift in and out. Right. So okay. I have 117 Mis games available from that, which is where the game I'm playing at the moment this week mainly came from. Right. There's an awful lot of games there, well, I mean, and at least one of them was a game I was going to buy, and I think I've been trained. I, wow. They've taught me I shouldn't buy games anymore. I should just wait for them to turn up on this subsystem. So, I mean, I don't know a lot about a lot of those games there, but just as a sort of rough finger in the wind ballpark figure, I'd say that's... You're going to take... That's about six months to a year's worth of gaming there, really. Well, it depends on what you play. Well, if you if you try if you attempt to complete it and get a reasonable amount of all the hiddens and whatever they're, they're, whatever yeah. the equivalents are, there are a there are a, cu there are a of couple games. of 10, uh, 15 hour games there. Uh, it's Lego Star Wars, if you play it fully, that's probably thirty to go through and do everything. And, and that's a month. And next month, you're probably going to get a similar sized list. I have already. <laughs> <laughs> for most of them, I right? I haven't got the uh, full list for. Um, Humble yet. So I think I sort of see what you're driving at here. But the Humble, the big headline game for Humble this month is Borderlands 2. Okay, that's a that's a good purchase. That's yeah. a good game. That, that in itself will take... Not Borderlands 2, sorry, um, Bloodborne 2. No, um, what? Dark Souls 2. That's Dark Souls. Oh, wow, that'll yeah. take you quite a while. Yeah, no, but Borderlands 2 is the rant that's coming up in a couple of weeks. Mm. Um, yeah, and that's a big game, which is going to take forever. I don't need to buy games. I was going to buy Abzu, which is a, a, a fantastic looking game, which I looked at and thought, hang on, I've been burnt a bit recently on buying PS4 slightly <laughs> indie games, which aren't quite as uh, long or as involving as they sound. So mm. I will hold off because it'll probably come on PlayStation it will Plus. It'll probably come up And on what it. happened? Yeah, there you go. So um, yeah, I'm not buying games. Some companies are, oh, I'm not even sub to the Origin one. Origin have their own thing. Yeah. Do they put out enough games to justify a monthly subscription? No, it's an a, it's an annual year for about thirty quid a year, I think twenty five mm. thirty quid, okay. and it just gives you access to all of the games early. Yeah, uh, you can buy them early because thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, it's an honour to be allowed to be buy, uh, able to spend my money early, and and it also uh, has their back catalogue. So after games been out for six months a year, it'll go on there. Mm. So you know if you want to play. Uh, the last Mirror's Edge, for instance, it's on there now. Or if you want to play last year's FIFA or any other sports games going back a while. It, yeah, it's good if you like uh, Origin games. Mm. So you, you, uh, 
yeah, I see the problem. You, I mean, you could sign up for one month of that, then unsubscribe, and then like ah. in, in six months' time, sign up for another bundle. Well, that's worth. the thing because if you unsubscribe from the PlayStation one, you lose the games. They take them away, but the other two don't. Yeah. Although the big sub from Microsoft, you do lose the games. It's, uh, I, I can't put my finger on it, but there's something very fundamentally wrong with this. I think I, I don't know if I'm right. There's either something. There's something either very good for the consumer or very bad for the consumer and i can see the points for both sides but on the whole i think it's very bad because what it's doing is it's encouraging me not to take risks on games it's encouraging me to wait why after getting a month one month and that list of what sort of 30 or so titles each of which are going to be on average 10 hours worth of gaming why would you then go away and buy a particular other game as well because you might want to play it well, yeah, I mean, individual. I suppose it comes down to differentiation. Is there anything on there? A lot of those stuff on there I'd not heard of. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there I don't care about and I will probably never get around to playing. But stuff like Tales from the Borderlands I will play because I'm insanely curious yeah, about thing- that. But I never wanted to pay for that because I didn't want to pay any money to play that. Yeah, but even your 40 quid can't wait. This is I've been waiting for this for years, sort of AAA blockbuster thing. If you wait long enough... Well, it depends on the company. And it's very much a sort of Steam cell mentality, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it depends on the company because not all companies are going to put it, uh, their games on it. But saying oh, that, does in the end, saying that, I thought Ubisoft were never going to put any on because mm. Ubisoft are like that. They won't put any more onto the Microsoft one, for well, instance. They've got their and own then, shop. They're trying to yeah. Do, do you know what the two play? games are for next month? Uh, two of the four games. Yeah. After. Uh, it's Watch Dogs and um, Assassin's Creed Three. Which are both Ubisoft games. These games have a shelf life. Yeah. That's the uh, that's the problem. Eventually you're left with a... And even though it makes a bit of a nonsense because you're not talking about an actual warehouse full of physical stock, you, you have a kind of shelf life of interest. It's good. After a certain point, people are just not going to care. It, it is very, very good for the games publishers to be able to get a bit more cash for a yeah. game five years down the line. Who cares and that's about what Assassin's Creed 2 now, yeah. apart from nostalgists well, no. and archaeologists? Assassin's Creed 2 perfect example got re-released recently on a slightly updated version mm. and a, and a collection because that's what you do you do the remastered yeah, that requires version. a bit of extra work well, in terms yeah. of just well we've got this sitting around why not just give it away for a little bit of money and yeah just, and it works yeah. on the xbox one because it's backwards compatible yeah because that's what they're doing oh, oh, oh i did three is not a great assassin's creed game no i, quite, it, I it, quite like the outdoors of it and the hunting and stuff but it had nice tree running and that was about it yeah the world was interesting and the, the plot was rubbish no yeah. the game started good Mm. I like the start. Then uh, it turns out you weren't the cool oh, yeah. guy and you were yes. the annoying guy. <laughs> the, the protagonist switch early on. Yeah. yeah. Um, I but the point to being the is that you probably wouldn't get a lot of money just holding to holding to your guns and trying to keep selling that for forty quid, like you know, five or six years no, later. No, uh, and uh, all the companies will get a, ca- a cut of the cash for this. Yeah. So. Something will filter yeah. back to the. the and and lady, then what happened was, you know, I signed up to the Microsoft. Uh, big sub thing and that's 117 games a lot of which I already own mm. and I, at that point <coughs> I was thinking there's a couple of games here I own and you know I haven't actually played more than a couple of minutes of Yeah, if I hadn't bought them I'd now have them for free is this I mean I'm getting sort of parallels with supermarkets and high street stores here the, the whole sort of bulk discount are, this, are these the sort of discounter supermarkets of gaming because we've already had the high street bricks and mortar battle and, and to be honest i think game has lost game has lost so many times you, you know they've lost but, because all they've got on their sh- you know when you yeah. go in there they've got steam cards <laughs> on their racks so they basically no no they got steam cards Pre-owned. second-hand controllers second-hand consoles and second-hand mobile phones and yeah, a tiny yeah. bit of games yeah they've, they've, they go significantly into the buying buying second-hand electronics tat that, you yeah know, they sort of and reselling it at the well, last market. It wasn't Steam <clears throat> and the online stores that killed game. Mm. Yeah, I think it was the supermarkets. Well, yeah. It was the moment you could get Call of Duty from the supermarket cheaper well, than you could get help. it from game. Yeah, a sort of two pronged assault. Ca- yeah. Casual purchasers will just yeah. get it in a supermarket. Yeah. You, you get your big AAA call- thing that everyone knows. When you walk into a supermarket, there is a stand by the door now. Yeah, well, That's where the, games are now. There's a stand by the door when you walk in the supermarket. So the two you pick up your copy, you buy it for a bit <laughs> off. So, you, yeah, your casual gamers are going to just pick it up from the supermarket because why wouldn't you get it for cheaper anyway? Yeah. And your connoisseur gamers, <laughs> targeted people like us who are after very specific things, we just go straight <coughs> straight to the online. We're probably involved with a Kickstarter. Um, you know, we're getting it through yeah. Steam. Or we, even it's AAA, yeah. We, yeah. We, we're getting it on digital download mm. now because why not? So, or even when I do buy a Steam game, sometimes on disc, 
it's because it's cheaper and I can get the code. And yeah, I'm getting it from Amazon. And these, well, th- well yes, I say Steam. Yeah. And other online places exist, but the, the the you know the straight download it now of it all is much more convenient than yes. going to a shop that may or may not have some stock. So you know that battle has been lost, I think. But I suppose the mistake is thinking that the war's over in any any significant shape or sense because the money is still there and can be, still be grabbed. So why not? Instead of, you know, individual publishers putting single AAA games up for four, you know, rationing them out as and when they're ready or when or whatever schedule they're, they're working to for 40 quid a go, why not start to undermine yeah. that with, with bulk discounting well, through, you, through you, bundles? You can see why Microsoft and Sony plans. are doing it. Yeah. Uh, it's attached to their monthly sub yeah. for the multiplayer. Well, that's a value add for that. Yeah, well, it's a value add. Which, and the important thing there is when you're not maybe not doing multiplayer, you start thinking, yeah, but I'll lose these games. I'll, I'll yeah. lose access to new games or on PlayStation. I'll lose yeah, access to bring in this people- hundred and something library of games I've got from this system. I wonder what proportion of console gamers bother with multiplayer at all. I mean, yeah, obviously there's quite a significant and healthy core who are well into the, the, the vocal, random the vo- online stuff. The vocal stuff. lot do. Yeah. But um, I mean, you've got to remember, of course, that if a game sells 10 million, yeah. uh, you're not seeing 10 million people playing the They're multiplayer. They're jumping straight into a pick-up deathmatch online. The, there's the a large game. chunk of people who only ever, each year, by FIFA or Call of Duty, mm. and that's all they play all year. But there's a, both those games will support you all year. Yeah, but there's a large amount of people who I imagine will buy a, buy a Call of Duty game and never go online with it. Oh yeah, they'll play through the campaign, be ticking the box, happy, yeah. moved on. Yeah, and I suspect they outnumber the online aficionados. I, I suspect they do. So it's, how do we get those people to get to pay us yeah. fifteen pound well, a month for a, some sort of console well, sub? Uh, if they don't care about the multiplayer, that's what the new Microsoft sub is. Um, when yeah. I guarantee, when you get a new Xbox now. It's going to come with uh, the free trial for that as a code in the box, mm-hmm. and which is 14 days free of 114 games. Are you not then going to say, right, I'm going to spend a tenner a month and keep this massive library of games? I've got a brand new console. I've never had a console before, or I'm just upgrading to get a new console. <coughs> well, Look at all these games I could have for nothing. I've always thought, found it to be nasty and exploitative, but it makes it's a real no-brainer. Yeah, exactly. £10 a month for a vast amount of games, and as long as you yeah. don't stop paying that £10 a month, they won't go away. Yeah, and, and if you're Microsoft v Sony, and you're looking at, say, uh, <coughs> what's the value of me buying one of these two vaguely identical consoles okay this one's not quite as powerful this one's a bit more powerful yeah, but the but less powerful one i don't really care about because i'm not going to notice to I be mean, honest i'm not going to notice again, i'm not know, a hardcore gamer <laughs> i don't care about the frame mate. Well, even in hardcore gaming the proportion of people who, yeah. who start counting texels yeah. or whatever you and, know, and so doing benchmarking it becomes slim. a massive value add when you just kind of stick on the box <clears> saying 117 <throat> games included yeah yeah that is good yeah, well, then and I, I suspect be... consoles and console games have often sort of been approached the razors and blade model in the past a great oh, deal yeah, anyway. The, definitely, the, 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 the console itself probably doesn't sell for what it actually costs. Oh no, it does now. Uh, they used they to do. not sell it for what the cost was, but then everyone got into a lot of trouble doing that by not making a lot of money. So mm. I think they always sell at cost now, oh, or a round cost. Yeah. There, there, there were stories of the, you know, the first Xbox and I think the Dreamcast as well and things. But the price of the games was quite high to reflect that. Yeah. That, does that come down significantly? Oh, no, it has. Because mm. if, if you consider, well, if you consider back in the day of the uh, N64 or whatever, mm. uh, or the snares or whatever, when they were being released to here, it was something like 70 quid a game. Mm. And, you know, it's come down. It's, got, it, it's edging back up again. But you have, if you. It's like that's so just inflation. Everything's more expensive. Well, and, and the, the way they got around the making the games expensive was. Here's the game. Mm-hmm. Here's the uh, uh, season pass for the DLC. Yeah. Therefore, your game plus the DLC, and you're uh, hoping enough people buy that to add the up yeah, the cost. Yeah. What else can we sell the day one? Because if, if you look at that. DLC, right, very few d- bits of DLC actually have the same content per pound mm. as the main game does. And I know that's a completely horrible way of looking at anything. Well, also, I mean, a lot of the DLC I've, I've sort of dabbled with in the past, if you know what you're looking for, you can tell that they made the DLC at the same time as yeah. the main game. So it's not What, actually... you mean there's gaps on the menu for it, yes. like in that Assassin's Creed time? Yeah, yeah, or just bits, suspicious bits missing that get filled in when you uh, buy the DLC. Which means that functionally the DLC itself has cost them literally nothing extra to produce. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're just selling part of a game and hoping people stump up well, for the other. Well, the, the argument for DLC is <coughs> it keeps your artists busy in the time between the code <coughs> building keep, the engine. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and well, in between the, all the your contents free. Once once your your game's finished and your content's ready, the coders go off and start doing prep for the next game, mm. and your artists need something to do while the game's in QA and they're not doing ramping up for the next game. Mm, so yeah, you have to do DLC. That's yeah. the argument. Yeah, 
But then you got so yeah. So if you got all these different competing packages, subscriptions, effectively, what we yeah. used to pay for one the MMO back in the day. Yeah, exactly. All trying to compete with each other. And is it expected and reasonable that you would just sign up for all of them, or is there an actual real struggle here well, to, to gain the, the you know the dollars, the pounds? Okay, well, from, the, with the Microsoft hobbies. and the Sony ones, the uh, ones that come with their multiplayer thing, if you ever do any online stuff or use any of the stuff which they've tied to the online stuff, like be able to look at YouTube and all those other things that which they've tied to it for weird reasons, mm. then yes, it's a no-brainer because yeah. you, you can need it anyway. Plus, I suppose it's not, if you're not trying to sell a PlayStation 4 Plus subscription thing to an Xbox owner. That doesn't no. make any sense. But they've already made the choice and commitment to either have one platform or the other, yeah. or both. The, the, the only slightly weird one is Humble Month because that only that is a offering which really is aimed at people who like indie games smaller more weird games yeah i sometimes look at it as you know, i just browse the thing now and then i mean i've got a kind of sort of vague vague sense of unease about the whole humble thing anyway but the the monthly thing is never any it's, it's never massive stuff generally is well, it, has, don't often, you'll, you'll it one, has one big game you'll get one or two things that you've number. heard of yeah exactly and then quite a lot of small stuff you've yeah. never heard of but is this so these bundles are they just a good way to get people to try things oh that they wouldn't otherwise look at um it's that sort of mystery box was it loot boxes yeah that sort of thing yeah. uh green man gaming have a similar thing where you spend 49p or whatever and get a free code and it could be something really big but i tried one of those shock, on GOG once. it's not going to be <laughs> I, 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 yeah they had a random like thing like that on gog once and it turned out to be some some isometric tile based sort of 90s era rpg i'd never heard yeah. of and played for about two minutes and got bored of so so yeah go figure the mystery game thing um does steam do a, a monthly bundle? no do you think they ever will is that <sighs> oh, or is well, it just, uh, just an absolute nightmare of publisher rights and so on I would say that they'll be well within their capabilities to do it, but, well, technical capabilities, but the actual realities of Valve as a company mm. means no. Yeah, no. They have a lot of trouble they, getting people to sign on for They that. can't organise that much. Valve, yeah. as much as we want to love Valve, they are not a company who's in 100% control of anything they do uh, anymore. I saw a link to a fantastic hit piece on Valve in Polygon. It was some opinion thing that was just casting them as some kind of totally sinister ultra capitalist. And I could see the point. Well, yeah. a company, you mean? Well, quite, yeah. yeah. No, they're just a little bit incompetent, I think. Mm. Mm. So, so here you are every month yeah. getting like thirty games of like more, 10 more, hours more, more, and more. Yeah, more, you're not going to finish that before the next one comes down. The oh pipe. no, I've got the next ones already. You've this is last month. Do that all count to your pile of shame? Would you say technically? Yeah, yeah. Well, especially the humble ones, which uh, I think they pushed my Steam See, it's games just, just over five hundred. The elegance of it, the wastage that really sort of appalls me about this whole thing is is we get into the point where we've just yeah, here's some money, keep taking the money, keep giving me games. Oh, I haven't got time to play any of them. God no, I just it's the it's the trophy of it all, the acquisition. It's, it's nice to know that you have access to a he who dies when the most games wins. I don't know. I mean, it, it does a game exist if you've never played it? And we get into a sort of philosophical oh, point there. That's a good point, actually. The pile of shame. I mean, I I think I've got three or four games in my Steam library I've never played, and that's just because they were free stuff I'm not interested in anyway, like Counter-Strike Global Offensive or whatever. Ask, I don't good. like Counter-Strike type stuff. But, um, You're, yeah, we should make this clear. You are a freak. I'm a bit of a freak, yes. I, 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 think, I, get, I think I buy maybe one game every two months, roughly one a month on average, I think. Sometimes uh, much-valued watchers and listeners of the show do gift me things, and I do diligently play them. But um, on the whole, I uh, but then I have a habit of just going around around same old MMOs ad infinitum, which is a whole different thing anyway. Yeah. But I just I find myself slightly appalled by that that list. There's some really good games here, though. I don't. Well, I'm not doubting they are. I just quite, I just wonder whether you're going to actually get to play them or not. I've played that that that. A lot of it, I suppose, is stuff you've already got. Yeah, that's the thing. So it, there's it, overlap there. Yeah, which... that is the thing. It's overlap. I think it's games I shouldn't have bothered buying in the first place. Well, you know, at cheaper. the end of the day, you decide the value of it all, certainly. But I don't know. Are we? It's like we've been just... I don't know. The pâté foie gras keeps springing up for some reason in my mind. It's like we've been force-fed games to the point where we just don't care anymore about any of them. 
Is that are we getting sort of deadened to the idea of games as a rare and precious thing that should be anticipated and, and looked forward to, or do we just? I don't know. Are we, get, are we sort of advancing tr- down the future to a future where we just take our games by by the you know by the by the terabyte? <laughs> I'll, have, I'll have half a terabyte of entertainment, please. No, I don't much the, care the, what's the, in it. The last AAA game companies would still like you to pre-order their games. Thank you very much. Pre-ordering? God, I don't have time to buy things when they come out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, maybe maybe be getting to the age we are and having seen as many games as we have we've starting to lose the idea of anticipation well, that's the what's thing. the last game you looked forward to uh, i mean presumably you you know you must look forward to some of the stuff you've kickstarted so, uh so yeah some, you, put some, Park. you put some uh, you were you were you were, an, you were looking no forward but to i was that? looking forward to it coming out i didn't want to kickstart it because i thought you, it was a you, dumb idea so how how far before kick thimbleweed park came out did were you aware of it were you following it from i was aware of when the kickstarter started and i thought oh that's a good idea and i also thought oh that's going to get made I mean, the moment no, it went over i thought i don't need to kickstart this i just don't even look for game news anymore i don't i mean sometimes i'll see a screenshot or a bit of a video someone will link someone i you know respect and know on twitter will link through or on, on slack or whatever and i'll have a quick look but on the whole, I'm just so I'm sort of vaguely aware that I'm so already tied up with fantastic experiences that I'm currently enjoying, and often those are things that have been out for three or four years anyway because I've only just gotten around to it. I'm not. There's keep, a reason why the new show. I'm not away. keeping up. That's the thing. No. And and should 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 we be expected to keep up? With gaming, is well, no, it's, it's, you know, to be to be considered gamers, to it's feel a choice. Like you're doing it's it properly. a choice. You can either keep up, yeah, or you can keep up with the bits you care about. Yeah, I and I'm keeping up with the bits I care. About. I'm not bothering to keep up with. It's stuff. differentiation, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I don't bother keeping up with Call of Duty anymore. It doesn't come into my <laughs> radar. Yeah, yeah. You just assume one will be along every year. You assume they'll be slightly better than the the one. Well, the year the, before. they'll be slightly different, and uh, yeah. I don't need to play them, but. <laughs> yeah, people like them, and there's nothing wrong with liking them. So and how did I end up on Star Crawlers, which is a brand new game, essentially. I had no, knew nothing about it. I, was, I faced it, yeah. So I think I came across that because I the Steam recommender. No, not not Steam recommendations, because I refused to log in and let it start psychoanalyzing me and picking stuff off. Yeah. I, you know, I log in to play the games, obviously, but when I'm browsing the, the website on a mobile phone or whatever, then I, I don't log in with my Steam account because I'm afraid of it. Uh, it says, please log in so we can suggest more helpful recommendations that are more relevant to you. And I I, I recoil from that. I don't There's know a chance. Paranoia. And bear with me at home, listeners who are giggling. There is a chance that it might actually have good recommendations. No, no. That's the thing. All these recommendation-y type stuff don't work because I refuse to I actively you, you, fight the uh, the analysis. Also, you don't get, you don't buy enough for it to know what you like. No, it's, it just suggests, oh, you have bought an RPG. Players who like <laughs> RPGs also have liked these things. And it's just such a wide... You know, it's like you might as well just... Yeah, let's just cut... Just cut your game list in half and offer up. So obviously that's my fault because I'm not buying into it. I'm not engaging. I'm not letting it simulate a, a pseudo Tim well enough yeah. for it to be able to then predict my likes and dislikes. It's like, an I epi- find it's like the episode of Black Mirror when it's uh, a very Black yeah. Mirror thing. This whole thing, yes. So I don't, I don't even, uh, yeah. But no, but I was just, I was browsing through the sci-fi category. Okay. And I just thought I quite like sci-fi games, so I'll have a look through there. So I suppose I was. It's not that I want it to do. But you used the user reviews to tell you if it was probably quite good. Yes, yes. And, and you know, I skim over the, pl- the thumbs up and I always look for the thumbs down yeah. and read those carefully, which suggests a lot about my personality. Actually, no, it suggests an awful lot about how good you are at uh, spotting the way people use these pluses and minuses to gain the system. Yeah, I mean, I'm quite happy to... Well, I don't know, I'm quite happy to pick up a game that people generally like and discover for myself why it's likeable. But if people are putting thumbs down and, and pointing out very specific bad things that I, know, I myself don't like... I mean, a down, a down review isn't necessarily... Oh, no, stay away from yeah. it for me. You have to find out what they didn't like yeah. about it. it, it Maybe they don't like something you really like. Yeah, exactly. That can actually become a positive. And also, a lot of the time, uh, it can be everyone's jumping on the bandwagon of downvoting this game, because like in the case of Dawn of War 3... Mm. Um, an awful lot of brand new accounts started saying bad things about it. Well, and, yeah, I know people game it up and down. People on message boards organised, yeah. and it may have been stuff. valid. What to the Steam thread? Yeah. We need to upgrade our favourite thing. The comments may have been valid, but there was a definite amount of bundling on to uh, say bad things because that was the thing to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I so you look at something like No Man's Sky, and you look at the reviews in there, and you just get nothing useful from no. a cavalcade of people going, "Oh shit," you know, and you think, oh, 
you know, yeah. <laughs> explain why, please. You know, point out something. And you get poor every soft on there. You get some poor poor sod who's trying to take it seriously and write yeah. a balanced <laughs> game review with a list of pros and cons, and you know, give it the benefit of the doubt and give it some proper examination. It's just buried in a mountain yeah. of of. of uh, you know, sort of quirky com- comedy reviews was turned was was turned into a duck very early on. Eleven out of ten would duck again. You know, you just think, oh, you what know, really right, go away. When go you start away. typing your comment, a thing comes up at the top saying, "Are you saying it was rubbish just because it wasn't the game you wanted it mm. to be?" I think it should auto delete any any review that ends with "Would X again" as well, because yeah. I think that meme has time has come and yeah, gone. It really right. has. It hasn't helped anyone. So yes, it, at the end of the day, again. you're left not knowing anything about anything and just. Stabbing in the dark on a random game list, anyway. Well, but the problem with that is the uh, amount out. of dross is so large. Yeah, I lucked out with with Star Crawlers. It's very good, but you know, it was, it was such an arbitrary decision. It could have been a really bad game, and, and you know, there you go. Which is generally why I don't. Oh, but really, buy really stuff. bad games have really, really bad reviews. I think enough. There's enough noise to signal ratio. Yeah. You know, there's enough it, signal in that noise was it, to was steer it. Was it fairly positive or a mixed? It was fairly positive. Yeah, yeah. then a fairly positive odds are. It's so I suppose good. Steam reviews do work not because we oh, yeah. not because we care at all what you personally think but because in, if a thousand people give it a yeah. you know give it an opinion at you least half are, of those you are, are irrelevant yes but in enough numbers you are a data point <laughs> yeah. but if we get enough data points we'll get an average liking or disliking but then you're sort of working towards a kind of pseudo meta steam customer whose opinion is an aggregate average of like tens of thousands of steam pl- customers yeah, but he, and that that can be distilled into this one sort of weird imaginary individual and you have to work out if you like that individual's yeah. tastes or not because yeah. that's essentially what you're seeing in that and, list and it's when, very weird and when the information becomes available to game developers to start using it to tailor features then it's yes. going to get really weird yeah yeah because yeah exactly. you end up with this massive sort of meta individual who whose opinions directly mirror metacritic or <laughs> steep mean as an average and and that person is getting game design tailored specifically to them because people People don't understand or apply statistics as, as, as a blunt instrument too often. God, what a weird rant. Um, yeah, so well, you, should, you should unsubscribe from a load of those, I think, because you've, no. got, you've got way too well, much oh, going on already. If I unsubscribe from Games of Gold, yeah. then my current playthrough of Borderlands 2 with my girlfriend will be ruined. Oh, you, you, require, you need that for the multiplayer. Yeah. yeah. If I unsubscribe from PlayStation Plus, yeah. then my upcoming playthrough of Destiny 2 with my girlfriend will be ruined. Yeah. If I unsubscribe from Humble Bundle, nothing much will change, but yeah. I quite wanted to copy of Dark Souls 2, so I'm going to stay subscribed. <laughs> they got you over a barrel, really, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I obviously prefer my own life, I suppose, because I you know, I feel like I'm in control of it. But I, it's I, nice I, that you do. I know, exactly. I, I, have, I can maintain the illusion <laughs> I'm in control of it anyway. Yeah. But I am the sort of person who would look at a, a pile of shame of 30 games I've never played and get really agitated and, and feel quite bad about you all that. You think I laughed. Well, exactly. I mean, I don't, I don't want to get to the point where I've got 20 games I haven't played because it, that just seems, I don't know, wasteful, disrespectful? What? I I've got know. original Xbox games I haven't played. <laughs> Still shrink wrapped. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think we're quite different persons in that regard. Yeah. Anyway. So I don't know what to make of all this. I think it's a worrying trend, but I don't see it slowing anytime soon. All I know is it's stopping me buying many games. And in a way, I feel, like I feel stupid because I feel like I'm arguing for less choice yeah. and less value in gaming. All though. I know is I shouldn't have bought Undertale or Super Hot or whatever and all those games have come up on it recently and I, I can see a future it. where there is a steam subscription and that's the only thing you need to pay and that will give you access yeah. to the entire steam library and i was proved right by not buying abzu which 